I'm Phil Tarone, Senior Editor of Make Magazine, and I'm here at Maker Fair. And one of the great treats uh, at this Maker Fair are some of our authors from some of our new books, uh, and I'll uh, talk about that in a second, uh, were actually here. So uh, I've been a fan of chemistry and chemistry sets for a while, and it's been hard to actually find chemistry sets, and it's been hard to find resources for chemistry. But our new book uh, for our DIY Science Series, The Illustrated Guide to Home Chemistry Experiments, by Robert Bruce Thompson is um, probably one of the better ones out there and on the, the front of the book it says all lab uh, no lecture and that's one of the things that we're gonna uh, learn today is uh, just one piece that was uh, added to the book and uh, I'm here with uh, maybe you can introduce yourself a little bit hi I'm Bob Thompson I'm the author of Illustrated Guide to Home Chemistry and Phil asked me to talk a little bit about one of the changes we made uh, very close to the time the book actually went to the printers. And it was we had to add a note because a couple of the experiments used crystal iodine. And just before the book went to print, the, the DEA, the Drug Enforcement Agency, changed the rules and made crystal iodine a list one compound. What that means is, whereas it used to be you could walk into just about any mall in the country and go to an outfitter's and pick up a bottle of crystal iodine for water purification, now if you try to do that, uh, they may still have it, but if they do, you're going to have to fill out a big federal form, show your driver's license, and you get out on a DEA list, which most people don't want to. To show the futility of the kind of attempts that the DEA does to control chemicals, uh, what I'm going to do right now with Phil is show you how in about two minutes with some really readily available stuff, you can make your own iodine. This Make Weekend project is powered by Radio Shack. Visit Radio Shack Invention Lab for more projects and exclusive videos and the chance to win Radio Shack prizes. What we have here is called potassium iodide. It is uh, basically an uncontrolled chemical. You can, uh, I could order a ton of this stuff, literally have it delivered to my house, and the only one that would raise their eyebrows would be my wife. There's just, there's no paperwork to be done on it or anything. And what I'm going to do is dissolve a little bit of this potassium iodide, and ordinarily, of course, working in the lab, I would weigh it out, but I'm just going to eyeball it right here. And Bob, what would this normally be used for, uh, this, this particular? Potassium iodide? Um, it's a common laboratory chemical. Also, interestingly, anywhere near a nuclear plant, they have stocks of this stuff in pill form because if there is a nuclear accident in iodine-131, which is, uh, has a partiality for accumulating in your thyroid, is released, what they do is they give everybody, adults and children, a dose of this like twice a day. The label on this chemical is blue, which means poison. It's about as poisonous as table salt. So let me go ahead and add a little bit of water. And potassium iodide is very soluble. 100 grams of water actually dissolves more than 100 grams of potassium iodide. It's a very soluble chemical. So we put it in solution. It's almost, yep, it is dissolved. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is add some hydrochloric acid. <clears throat> this is concentrated hydrochloric acid reagent grade from a chemical supplier. But you don't really need that. You can go down to your local Home Depot and buy a one-gallon bottle of muriatic acid, which is almost as concentrated, and that's just an old name for hydrochloric acid. So we swirl those together to mix them. And then we take some hydrogen peroxide, which is just drugstore, 3% hydrogen peroxide. We could use any number of other oxidizers that are common around the house, including, for example, laundry bleach, stuff that's not difficult to get a hold of. So we add a little bit of this, and we see what looks like a brown solution. And in fact, it's not a brown solution. What it is is a suspension of crystal iodine. We can filter the stuff through a coffee filter. And we've just bypassed the DEA's list one restriction on crystal iodine. Great. Well, thank you so much, Bob. Thanks. It's been great to be with you, Phil.